Hey YouTube, uh, sorry for the lack of updates recently. I recently acquired this new, well, I guess new in quotation marks, it's from about 1995. This computer has 16 megabytes of RAM, 100 megahertz processor, and a 1 gigabyte hard drive. So, makes it the perfect testing platform for Windows 95. And I thought with this video just to try and test it out, I'd revisit one of my favorite worms called Opaserve which surfaced in the year 2000. Now the reason why I'm running this worm is because it's very destructive and has a unique way of destroying things and because the previous owner of this computer left a lot of uh, I guess personal documents on here in order to respect their privacy I just want to format the whole thing so why not make a video in the process of doing so. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and run it and I'll explain to you how it works. I made a video on this in March of 2009 I think and back in those days I wasn't narrating my videos so it was pretty difficult to figure out what was going on so hopefully this will help clear up confusion. We'll go ahead and run the executable. Of course it's missing a goddamn. Hold on one sec. Alright we're almost ready to go here. I just had to copy over uh, a few DLLs that the, pro the worm apparently needs in order to run. Don't you just love how Windows 95 opens every new Explorer window for whenever you click on a folder? It's so inconvenient. Alright, so, the worm was created in the year 2000, and the first few variants only spread using a very unique, uh, I guess, exploit, I guess you could say. It, it was a flaw in the Windows networking share password system. Now the worm was able to suggest the first byte of the password to the host and using this exploit it would automatically be authenticated. Basically all the worm had to do was present each character, letter, number, whatever one time just going through a list in order to gain access to any computer on the network or over like uh, far away networks as well. That's how it was able to spread. It was a network worm, it didn't send emails or anything like that. It just spread in this very unique way. So it would just find a, a host that was running Windows 95 or 98, and it would just start suggesting A, B, C, D as the password, and so on, until it was able to authenticate and gain access. So, let's go ahead and run it. You have got to be kidding me. Hold on one minute. Okay, we will get this worm to work if it's the last thing I do. Alright? So, this is about the fourth DLL in the process of making this video that I've had to copy over. Because once I run it, it's going to infect the machine, and I want you guys to see that. I don't want you to just miss it and I fill you in on it. Because the point of these videos is to show you malware in action. And if you don't see it in action, I shouldn't be making these. So we're just going to go ahead and copy these DLLs to the computer. Because Windows 95 is the best operating system ever made. Sorry again about the video quality. So, after the worm gains access to the system, it continues looking for more systems to infect, infect, which takes up a lot of resources. And starting with later variants, it started activating in a very destructive manner that would require losing all your data through repartitioning the drive. So let's go ahead and run it. And I don't know, my money's on, there's going to be another DLL error. We're going to have to fix it. Holy crap, it's working. It's actually working. The worm brand successfully. Alright. Go ahead and eject the floppy disk. Now, there should be some registry keys that it added that we can delete, which will trigger its destructive payload. Microsoft Windows, current version. Now here we are. Probably can't see it all that well, but there's mprexe dot mprexe dot exe, and there's a bunch of worm files here. If we go ahead and delete this registry key, the worm will activate its payload as kind of self-defense. So we deleted it. We wait a little bit. There it goes. Computer shuts down. 
Yes, I love Windows 95, despite its many shortcomings and irritations. Alright, let's see if the warm payload activates. This is one of my favorite payloads. Come on, activate. Do it. Do it. I think it's working. Come on, OpaServe. Yes! Awesome! It worked! Alright. You get this illegal copyright notification. So, this comes up every time you boot the computer. And right now you can probably hear the drive clicking. That's it repartitioning your drive. So you're losing all your data as this screen is here. Now it says, in case you can't read it, Illegal Microsoft Windows License Detected. You are in violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Your unauthorized license has been revoked. For more information, please call us at 1-888-NO-PIRACY. If you are outside the USA, please look up the correct contact information on our website at www.bsa.org. Business Software Alliance, promoting a safe and legal online world. Now, this message will come up every time you restart your computer. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. You're like, damn, what happened to my computer? Illegal Microsoft license, I didn't even know about that. So you go ahead and boot up again. And you'll be greeted with the same screen. Now this screen alone is what makes it one of my favorite payloads of all time. It's just so, I don't know, devilish, I guess you could say. No, it might have borked the hard drive so that it doesn't even boot up to that screen anymore. Oh, it does. Sweet. I love this screen so much. So as you can see, every time you boot, this screen comes up and every time it repartitions your drive. Now, I'm going to stop the video for a moment and uh, load up FDisk so you can see the partition information. It, it destroys the disk in a very unique way. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, unfortunately I can't show you guys the partition information because it seems that OpaServe has messed it up so badly that any time you try to exit the setup for any of these boot disks it throws a memory allocation error and it halts the system. So I'll just go over briefly. Basically it divides up you know, any of your any size hard disk, it divides it up into three partitions. The first one is 100% full and takes up it takes up 100% of the disk and it's about 40 gigabytes. The second one takes up also 100% of the disk and takes up 2 gigabytes. And then a third one takes up, I think, 40% of the disk with 0 gigabytes. So it ends up filling your hard drive with 240% of its capacity, which doesn't work, which basically just messes up all of your data. So that's about it for OpaServe.